Hi there, I'm Zach Kircher, and you're watching Kircher Talks Entertainment. I've been wanting to make a video about Mario Kart for a long time, but until recently, I didn't feel like I had much of a unique angle to provide. As I've said in the past, I always want the videos you encounter on my channel to be unique perspectives, ones that aren't regurgitations of something you might encounter elsewhere. Considering that Nintendo games permeate a lot of the conversations on YouTube surrounding video games, I didn't want this to be lost in the vast sea of opinions floating around this platform. Nevertheless, after the booster course pass was completed in November 2023, and with this summer marking the 10th anniversary of Mario Kart 8, I thought, My time has come. So, in celebration of Mario Kart 8's 10th anniversary, I wanted to proclaim that this is the best Mario Kart game to have ever been released, and whatever Nintendo comes up with next has a lot to live up to. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! All right, all right. I know everyone is allowed to enjoy whichever game in the franchise they want. If your favorite Mario Kart game is something different, that's okay. Here's where I will provide some context for the rest of the video then. I'm mainly going to be talking about my personal experiences playing Mario Kart rather than just doing a straightforward review. That will hopefully help you understand why I've come to believe Mario Kart 8 to truly be the best game in the series. First things first though, I admit that I've only ever played the Nintendo Switch version. Since this is meant to be a celebration of the 10th anniversary of Mario Kart 8 as a whole, I invited friend of the channel Nathaniel Ahart to share his thoughts on the original Wii U version for a couple of minutes. I think he helped my case in arguing why this is such a great installment in the series. Take it away, dude! I don't know if I got it right when it came out, but it was like one of those formative games on this system, because I had the Wii U uh, for most of its uh, runtime as a you know, mainstay Nintendo console. This game, I, I specifically remember, like, this was around the era when they started doing DLC for things. I remember getting all the DLC packs and, and of course, them bringing in, like, other non-Mario characters for the first time, like Link and, and uh, you know, the Villager and, and Isabella and the, and the Inklings and all that stuff. And it was so cool because we'd never seen that before. It was really kind of an impressive, and I, I still think the definitive... Uh, Mario Kart game, whatever system you play it on. I mean, of course, the Switch, as I said, you're going to get more bang for your buck, but I, I really do think the way the gameplay was streamlined, uh, innovative ways, like with the box that kind of gets rid of, of the blue shell. I mean, that was a, a huge innovation that, and really made you uh, get a bit more creative with, okay, when am I going to use this? Am I going to wait for the blue shell, or am I going to stop someone from throwing a red shell uh, from right behind me? And I, I think that, you know, uh, idea of, you know, having those options is what really made it stood out from uh, the other entries in the franchise at the time and, you know, till today. So I'm really glad I had the opportunity to, to play this game o over the past 10 years and in, in both of its iterations because I've definitely uh, made a lot of memories uh, playing this game, especially it being portable, uh, you know, this HD game that... Uh, you know, really was the pinnacle of Mario Kart, and I still think is. It's uh, been a meaningful part of my life, as I'm sure it has been for many others that I know, and, and many other gamers who probably uh, watch this channel. You know, so uh, I'm really grateful that it, it's had this longevity that I don't think any of the uh, other Mario Kart games have, you know, no matter how uh, beloved they are. Like, this is the one everyone kind of looks to in, in a lot of ways, and as I said, I think the best one in the franchise. Thanks again for sharing your thoughts on this excellent game, Nathaniel. If any of you are interested in more of his own content, especially if you like movies and music, his channel's link is in the description. But now it's my turn to establish why I think Mario Kart 8 is the best game in the series, specifically the deluxe version for Nintendo Switch. So, I've been on this little rock we call Earth for nearly 30 years, and for most of my life, I've been playing video games. My first exposure to Mario Kart came with the Nintendo 64, Four installment when I was probably four or five years old. We never owned a copy of the game though, so it would always be at my cousin's house or my grandparents' cabin in the forests of northern Arizona where I would get a chance to play it. I relished every single opportunity I had to race on these iconic courses, whether it was Calamari Desert, Toad's Turnpike, or Yoshi Valley. But in hindsight, there were issues. Steering in that game feels a little bit janky if you were to go back and play it nowadays, and the consequences for being hit with a shell or going 
off the edge felt unnecessarily punishing. One single mistake would cost you a lot of time and effort in a race, and it would be frustrating when you'd play with friends and they got the advantage over you simply because they had a red shell and used it at the opportune moment. Things sorta got better in future games as controls were refined and cart handling got smoother. Yet even as I grew up loving Double Dash, DS, Wii, and even all the way up to 7, there would always be little gripes I would have with each game that held them back from true greatness. Don't get me wrong, all of these games held some form of personal significance with me, such as how DS was one of the first games I ever played online, and I also have fond memories of wirelessly linking up to my friend's DS systems and playing multiplayer on school field trips. Even for a game like Wii though, which I put tons of hours into the online mode for when I was in junior high, there were problems that irritated me about it. Some of those included the fact that falling off the edge lost you a lot of time on the track just like previous titles, and that game's version of the blue shell being the most notoriously evil and repetitive iteration we've seen in the entire series. Like, seriously, it was a bad idea trying to be in first place in an online match for that game, since you could probably get hit by at least two or even three blue shells in the span of a single race. Getting whacked by one of those right as you were about to cross the finish line was much more prevalent than you would expect it to be, making online play as frustrating as it was fun. So where does that leave Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for me then? Well. Let me put it this way, every single Mario Kart game that came before it had its own set of problems, but they also made strides to innovate and introduce quality of life updates to refine the gameplay experience. Mario Kart 8 feels like the culmination of all of those improvements and a correction on previous issues. Consider the problems I had already mentioned previously, one of them being handling, for starters. This is the smoothest driving that any of the games have offered, which matters a lot since this game also feels the fastest due to its implementation of the anti-gravity section. Coupled with the mechanics of gaining a boost from tailing another racer from Mario Kart DS, and the steady top speed increases from collecting coins that Mario Kart 7 introduced, and Mario Kart 8 already impressed me by providing a completely exhilarating racing experience. Over the years, I've just gotten better at video games in general, most especially Mario Kart due to all the time I've invested in the series, so having a game that feels buttery smooth to play at its core was already a huge win for me when I first started playing it. But then I started to notice other things. When I would get hit by a red shell or accidentally drive into a banana peel, sure, it would momentarily derail my momentum, but not as much as I remembered the other games doing. It's a couple seconds of an inconvenience, and then the game lets you get right back to it. The same can even be said for falling off the edge, where even a few seconds from one game to the next makes all the difference in the world. For example, let's look at what happens when you jump off the Rainbow Road course in Mario Kart 64. Now compare that to the Rainbow Road course in Mario Kart 8. The timing difference may not feel like much, but when you're playing on a high speed and trying to win first place on every single circuit in Grand Prix mode, that small difference in time really means something. And believe me, I've gotten the gold first place trophies in all of those circuits. I have the shiny gold cart and paraglider to prove it. And that's not even touching on the items, which are the most balanced set of items in the history of Mario Kart. The fact that the blue shell appears less frequently in races is one thing, but the introduction of the super horn item gives you a legitimate opportunity to defend yourself from it. Now, if only this game let you switch between your inventory of two items so you could save something for when you really need it. If that was a feature, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would basically be perfect. Otherwise, I just appreciate that this game feels more legitimately fair and enjoyable than previous titles, at least from how my memory serves me. Believe me, I've been playing Mario Kart games quite literally for as long as I can remember, and I have had more fun playing Mario Kart 8 compared to every other game that came before it. There's just something to be said about a game that builds a foundation upon what worked before while tossing out what hadn't. This is a rock-solid good time that serves as the epitome of easy to learn, tough to master. That leads to an even bigger reason why I consider this to be the best Mario Kart game even after all these years. It may have a high skill ceiling, which appeals to someone like me, but the barrier to entry is lower than it ever has been. Mario Kart Wii got close in that sense, since anyone could pick up a Wiimote and start turning it from side to side, but Mario Kart 8 introduces custom 
customization features so that anyone can have fun even if they're brand new to the series. If you don't want to fall off the edge of the course, you can turn on a setting that will steer you back on the track. Custom races and battles also enable players to level the playing field through options such as removing certain items and adjusting the difficulty of bots. Some might consider that to be a cop-out, but consider my perspective. I married someone who didn't really play much Mario Kart growing up, let alone did the rest of my in-laws. They were a PlayStation family, so their kart racing experiences were mostly limited to Crash Team Racing. Therefore, once I entered into their life, I would try playing older Mario Kart games with them, but it just wouldn't be as much fun for them as it was for me, having had time to get accustomed to the controls and gameplay loop over the years. But once I got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in summer 2018, it became easier for all of us to have fun together. I've had similar experiences with my young nieces and nephews as well. Also, as I've said in previous videos, I'm a father now. I would assume that my daughter will likely try video games out in a few years from now, and if she is able to experience Mario Kart for the first time because of these accessibility features, that will just make for a fun way for my daughter and I to bond together. There's nothing wrong with quality of life updates like this that allow more people to just hop in and have fun. Isn't that what Nintendo was all about anyway? Mario Kart has always been a beloved part of the greater gaming zeitgeist because it's simple to get into. Nintendo just understands intrinsically that a game can only be as great as its core foundation of gameplay. It's one thing that Mario Kart 8 has beautiful visuals, a vast array of tracks to race on, especially if you bought the booster course pass, and an absolutely killer soundtrack, but none of that ultimately would have mattered if the game itself was just not fun. But it is fun, genuinely. It is one of maybe four or five games tops that I can actually boot up an online match for and enjoy myself with, even if I lose a race. When I was in college, I tried to not play a lot of video games during my final semester, but Mario Kart 8 provided just enough respite from my grind of constantly working part-time jobs and studying so that my brain wouldn't turn to mush. My wife and I can spend time at any given moment just losing ourselves in the entertainment value of racing these excellent courses. Truly, after spending years of refining this formula, Nintendo has landed on what I consider to be the peak of Mario Kart. Now time will only tell if it gets topped by the ninth installment and beyond. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, for doing so really does help me out, and I will see you all in the next one.